Hi, I'm Caroline Poland, the founder and CEO of Poland and Associates Consulting. And today I'm going to invite you to grab a cup of coffee and join me for a conversation about mental health and the holidays during this COVID-19 pandemic. And certainly holidays are a time of a lot of emotions uh, across the board. And we know that uh, mental health can really suffer during the holiday season. And now we are in new times with this COVID-19 pandemic. And so I wanted to specifically address some of the shifting emotions and the unique situations that we find ourselves in during this pandemic. So in this video, you're going to hear five different strategies for you to use this season as you navigate the holidays with this COVID-19 pandemic. My next strategy as you enter this holiday season is to set healthy boundaries. Again, this ties into knowing your why and your values. When we talk about boundaries, what we're talking about is saying yes and no wisely for yourself uh, and being responsible for the things that are within your property to be responsible for. So what are we responsible for? We're responsible for our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and the responsibilities that we have chosen to take on in our lives. And when things are outside of those, those things, then those things are outside of our property or our area of ownership. So when you think about this holiday season, what does it look like to own or take responsibility for your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions and your reactions. What do you want to say yes to and no to wisely? So with boundaries, what we're not doing is saying yes or no out of guilt. We're saying yes or no out of an intentional choice, knowing that it meets our values, knowing it meets our why, knowing it meets our goals, and it will create a healthier life for ourselves. The tricky thing with boundaries is it might lead other people to feel a certain way back towards you. Again, that's their feeling, that's in their property, their area of ownership. So we are not responsible for the feelings of other people. We're responsible for our actions. And so we want to always check uh, back with ourselves to make sure that we are truly being responsible for ourselves, but we are not responsible for what other people think about us. We are not responsible for the version of us that they've created in their minds. We're not responsible for making them feel happy with you or any other way when it comes to the choices that we're making during this holiday season or otherwise. And so uh, if you are choosing to stay home this holiday season and your family is upset, what yours is to do to own is what's in your property, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. And what is not yours to own is how another person responds to those things. Suzanne Stabile, who is a big name in the Enneagram world, has a question that I really love, and it is, what is mine to do? And I go back to that a lot myself. What is mine to do? My thoughts, my feelings, my actions, my reactions, meeting my responsibilities, living life according to my values, intentionally thinking through things and regulating, those things are all in my property. So I would encourage you to sit down now as the holiday season is starting and look at your boundaries, look at your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions, check with yourself, what is mine to do this season? And what is mine not to do? What can I release? When we choose to release things, when we choose to say yes and no wisely, ultimately what we find is a sense of freedom in our lives because we're able to live with integrity, with vulnerability, and own ourselves for who we are instead of having to live as an edited version of ourselves to make someone else happy. All right, so boundaries can get a little heavy and I know that there's a lot more that we could say about that. So let's pause and take a nice big drink of coffee and take a moment to just be present in your body. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. And even that simple act is a little moment of mindfulness that we can engage in. Which brings me to my next coping strategy, which is to engage in healthy coping. We all have coping skills that 
are healthy and we all have coping skills that are unhealthy. And it's on us, our area of responsibility to know what leads us to use our healthy coping strategies and the things that trigger us to go to our unhealthy coping strategies. So again, things can be both and, they don't have to be always healthy or always unhealthy, but the same thing like enjoying a TV show with friends might be unhealthy when we're sitting in front of the TV all day, just numbing out so that we don't have to feel or be present in our bodies. I love drinking coffee, but I rarely have more than one cup of caffeine in a day because I know that my body just doesn't respond well to that. So the same thing could be healthy or unhealthy in a lot of different situations, depending on what that is like for our bodies, what's going on in our bodies, and why we're choosing to engage with that. So. Utilize your healthy coping strategies, those things that are within your area of responsibility that you can do and utilize that meets that bigger why that aligns with your values, that allows you to stay healthy and not go into hypo arousal where you're shutting down, you're disconnecting, you're dissociating. Um, we want to just make sure that we are present in our bodies, that we have that sense of feeling and groundedness within us, that mindfulness, and that we can live life from our prefrontal cortex in that engaged and regulated way. And to tie into healthy coping strategies, my next strategy is to get outside into nature and just move. And this doesn't have to be a prescribed way of doing that, but we know that nature is one of the most psychologically healthy things for us to engage in. And moving our bodies also helps us to relieve some of that stress and frustration or anxiety that can build up. It kind of metabolizes it and moves it through our bodies. And so as the days get shorter and as we get stressed and we just wanna hunker down or disconnect, we want to make sure that we are in a safe way getting outside and moving. So whether that's hiking in the woods or just going for a quick brisk walk at some point in the day or you know, even just doing a quick body weight workout inside, uh, making sure that you're taking breaks and walking to the window and just looking outside and being present in your body as you do that, that can make a big difference. Now, again, this is not going to change the reality of what's going on. And when we talk about healthy coping skills and when we talk about boundaries and some of these other strategies that we've talked about, it's not that these things magically change our situation to make them easier or better, but it allows us to move through them to stay in that window of tolerance, like I've talked about in other videos, and I will link that playlist above so that if you're interested in learning more about the window of tolerance, you can find that there. But it just allows us to regulate and stay in that window of tolerance to keep our prefrontal cortex engaged so that we can stay grounded as we face the hard things. So again, even with coping, it's kind of a both and, a nice shade of gray where we can cope and regulate and enjoy nature and move our bodies and we can still have other emotions, we can still experience hard things, and one doesn't have to take away the other, but instead we can hold both together and hold these opposite things that are both true in our reality together. I know this season is hard and there's grief and there's loss and there's confusion and uncertainty and cases are rising across the country and we're just trying to figure out how to balance all of the things that we want and we need in our lives. And so the best way that we can do that is by staying healthy as we decision make, by staying regulated and being creative about the ways that we can continue to meet the things that we need to do to stay healthy. So let me encourage you to be creative as you engage in this unique holiday season. And remember, this is just temporary. This isn't going to last forever. And so we can do the hard things that we need to do now so that we can ensure that we have decades still with our family and our friends to continue to engage in fun and connection over the holidays. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Poland and Associates and my website, polandandassociates.com. And if you head to my website, you will find a form that you can fill out so that we can begin working together.